Hi there, Spark fans. Rob Reynolds here once again. When I first started coding, like many of you, the first thing I did was to type a few lines of code and have it return hello world on my screen. Uh, similarly, like many of you, I'm sure, when I began working with hardware, the first thing I did was to blink an LED in thousand millisecond intervals. Well, connectivity has become such a part of, well, everything nowadays that I wouldn't be surprised at all if the first thing you did when working with hardware was to blink an LED across the room. Or lesson one in coding was to get a screen to return hello world on the other side of the world. Uh, thanks to the IoT, connectivity is ubiquitous. And that's why more and more of the components that we put out here at SparkFun include some type of wireless connectivity, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, one of the many incarnations. And this week is no exception. So say you're looking for a Wi-Fi board on a thing plus footprint with ultra low power consumption, maybe full software stack, over the air firmware updates, well, then look no further than the new SparkFun Think Plus DA16200. At the heart of this board is the DA16200 MOD Wi Fi module, running an ARM Cortex M4F core with clock frequency of 30 to 160 MHz, with 256 kilobytes of ROM, 512 kilobytes of SRAM, 2 kilobytes of OTP, and 48 kilobytes of retention SRAM. The Wi Fi processor offers IEEE 802.11 BGN. 1x1 1 1 20 MHz channel bandwidth at 2.4 GHz, IEEE 802.11s Wi-Fi mesh. As far as Wi-Fi security, there's WPA and WPA2 Enterprise and Personal, WPA2 SI, WPA3 SAE, and OWE. And the available operating modes include Station, Soft AP, and Wi-Fi Direct modes Geo, GC, and Geo Fixed, and an on-chip real-time clock. It has an operating voltage from 2.1 to 3.6 volts, operating temperature from negative 40 to 85 degrees Celsius, and its three ultra-low power sleep modes can bring its current draw down to just 3.5 microamps. Plus, if you're prototyping with this and are interested in RF regulatory certifications, how's this? It's certified FCC for the US, IC for Canada, CE for the EU, KC for Korea, TELEC for Japan, and SRRC for China. The Thing Plus, or Feather Footprint board itself, gives you 28 PTH pins, including 16 multifunction GPIO pins, allowing up to four 12-bit ADC channels, up to two UARTs, an available SPI bus, and an available I2C bus. There are three LEDs for power, charge, and status. There's a two-pin JST LiPo battery connector, a four-pin JST quick connector, and a USB-C connector. And if you want to get more advanced and go a little crazy, we've given you JTAG SWD PTH pins. Now that ultra-low power consumption translates to the possibility of year-long battery life. Of course, depending on the peripherals you're using and the applications. But that will allow for long-term standalone battery-powered applications like flammable gas leak detectors, for things like security cameras or video doorbells, for remote asset monitoring, so, so many options. Now, a word of warning, this module is programmed using the DA16200 Free RTOS SDK. So if you're looking to just throw together a quick Arduino sketch to get up and running, this is not the module you seek. This is gonna demand a little bit more work on the front end, but it's going to be worth it. So if you're looking for a high performance, ultra low power, incredibly versatile Wi-Fi module, take a look at the new SparkFun Thing Plus DA16200. Check it out over at sparkfun.com and, you know, Stay safe, be kind, and happy hacking. Rob Reynolds here once again. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> oh, thing footprint fire poop. <gasps> to get your screen to return, to get a screen to return, hello world, a standalone battery operated in a world where connectivity is king with the DA16200 so close. And that allows for standalone. <laughs> <laughs>